Nancy, which walk do you want to choose? Childhood is over after all. You need to think about adulthood, asks Olivia Goodman, who was very worried about her pupil. Well, I haven't thought about it yet. Maybe I'll get a job as a waitress in a cafe. The girl replied, confused by such a question. Waitress? No way. I've already taken care of you. Will you go to work as a housekeeper? Of course, Mrs. Goodman. I'm not afraid to work, Nancy replied. Mrs. Goodman in the orphanage was considered the teacher from God. Unfortunately, Olivia Goodman had no children of her own, and therefore she gave all her warmth and affection to foster children. With Nancy Brooks, she has established a special trusting relationship that only happens between mother and child. And now when it was time to leave the walls of the orphanage, the girl felt sad and heartsick. Don't worry, Nancy. There is no need to cry. When you do it, my heart breaks, said a touched Mrs. Goodman, who remembered Nancy as a baby. The girl's mother refused her in the hospital, and nothing was known about her father at all. Thank you, Mrs. Goodman. I will call you as soon as I get settled, Nancy said, hugging her beloved tutor, wiping her tears on the way. The former pupil walked out of the gates of the orphanage, looked back, and waved to Olivia Goodman. Nancy immediately went to the address indicated by the teacher to resolve the issue with work. She found the house she was looking for quickly. It was located on the corner of Park Street and stood out from all the others. Pressing the bell button, the girl patiently waited for the guard to come out to her. To Nancy's surprise, the interview went well. The hostess of the house, Megan Torres, turned out to be an extremely pleasant and sweet woman. So, Nancy, you're suitable for us. I see that you're a good girl, and I think that you will like it here. I'm glad, ma'am. When can I get to work? Asked Nancy, who was impatient to get on with her duties as soon as possible. You can start right now. If something is unclear, ask me or the matron. From the first day, Nancy began to show such diligence and zeal that almost immediately earned the respect of the tenants of the house. The girl did not disdain any work and seemed to be able to do everything. One day, when the girl had been working for three months, the hostess came up to her in the morning and said, Nancy, I wanted to warn you. Today there will be especially a lot of work. It's my birthday today. All my relatives and friends will come, so I'll be ready. On this day, everything happened exactly as the hostess said. In the midst of the holiday, Nancy hurried the next table with a tray. Accidentally stumbled, unable to keep her balance, the girl spilled a sparkling drink on one of the invited guests. Girl, where are you in such a hurry, may I ask? A stately man asks ironically. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm so awkward. The girl caught herself trying to blot the guest jacket with a napkin. Don't worry, once it more, one less. Beautiful stranger touched me. That's worth a lot. My name is Floyd, the man said. Hearing the praise, the girl was involuntarily embarrassed and blushed to the roots of her hair. I'm not a stranger. My name is Nancy, the housekeeper replied. And Floyd never stopped paying attention to the girl and making compliments. It was obvious that he is very experienced in dealing with the female sex. And his words fell straight into the heart of the gullible maid. From all this splendor, Nancy felt dizzy and for a moment, it seemed to her that she is not a homeless orphan, but the same as everyone invited, rich and happy. At the end of the evening, Mrs. Torres approached the housekeeper. Nancy, I see you've been talking to Floyd Green all evening. He is a serious businessman. Remember, Floyd is a great expert in seducing women. I wasn't really thinking about anything like that, Nancy replied embarrassed. But Mrs. Torres just smiled significantly and shook her head. And perceptibly, a month passed. Floyd tried to meet Nancy more than once, but the girl each time refused. But one day, Floyd managed to ambush Nancy on the street. A man with a bouquet of dazzling white roses knelt down and, in front of the astonished passers-by, offered Nancy his hand and heart. The girl was taken aback, but at the same time, she felt a pleasant wave of warmth and tenderness towards Floyd being born in her heart. At the moment, such a broad gesture on this part seemed so unusual and surprising to her that the girl answered with a timid consent. The wedding was played on a ground scale and Floyd spared no money to make it talked about for a long time in his city. The bride had everything she could only dream of, 
a big house, a loving husband, and a happy future. Five years have passed. Nancy, having mastered the role of the wife of a wealthy businessman, gave birth to two beautiful weather boys, Kevin and Josh. These were the years of the real family happiness, which unfortunately was not destined to last longer. Over time, Nancy suddenly began to notice that Floyd was increasingly allowed himself to snap at her and the children. The girl understood that most likely it was caused by problems at work, but on the other hand, she was uncomfortable with such treatment of her husband, and Floyd as he had been replaced. And the further it all went, the more vicious he became. One day, Floyd came home drunk and kicked his wife out of the house. Having no other place to live, Nancy called Mrs. Goodman and stayed with her. The unfortunate woman, crushed by such a cynical appeal to herself, cried for days on end. It's okay, honey. Time heals. Mrs. Goodman whispered, stroking the girl in the head. One day, a former teacher entered the room with a mysterious look, holding a strange folder in her hands. Nancy, here is the thing. You inherited the house from your grandfather. What grandfather? I grew up an orphan. The girl objected in surprise. In response to this, Olivia Goodman just spread her hands and began her story. As it turned out, Nancy's own grandfather spent a long time in the mines of Alaska. Trevor Brooks worked as a miner, not knowing about the adventures of his daughter and that she handed over her granddaughter to an orphanage. Only many years ago, exhausted by an incurable disease, she confessed everything to her father. Trevor Brooks had never had financial problems. Therefore, feeling that his health was no longer the same and his strength was leaving him, he decided to find his granddaughter. The old man hired the best seekers and lawyers to find his granddaughter and make a will for her according to which his house went to Nancy. Trevor Brooks died three months ago, but the notary was only able to find Nancy now. So, now after the news brought by Olivia Goodman, the girl went to the country when her grandfather's house was located. Of course, the building was old and needed repair. It could have been worse. I can handle that, Nancy said with a sigh. Missing Kevin and Josh, whom Floyd never gave to her, the girl cried hard, long, dreary nights. On the other hand, Nancy understood that life goes on and it is impossible to stand still or go limp in any case. One day, having decided to fix the fence that was laying on one side, Nancy took a hammer with nails and went outside to cope with such a task alone. It turned out to be an impossible task, and the girl cursing herself for frivolity trying to nail the board without hitting herself with a nail on the finger. Suddenly, a pleasant male baritone sounded behind her. Can I help you? Nancy shuddered and turning around. Saw a handsome young man, who was apparently her neighbor. Well, if you're not joking, then help. She said, embarrassedly adjusting her bangs. The guy, to her surprise, turned out to be a jack-of-all-trades and sorted out the fence in a matter of minutes. From the conversation, Nancy learned that his name is Michael and that he has been living alone for five years, having lost his wife and daughter in a car accident. It's done. Now the fence is new and will stand for a hundred years. The guy said, smiling contentedly. Thank you very much. I don't know how to thank you. Excuse me, but could you also look at the fireplace and house? Autumn came. It's cold at night. Nancy said sheepishly. Okay, we need to check the chimney. Quickly. It's not a woman's business to fix pipes, Michael said, following the girl into the house. After inspecting the chimney, Michael cleaned it of soot and checked the reliability of the brickwork, if it would crumble or not. Suddenly, a guy found a strange niche in the wall. It was laid with bricks, but without the addition of cement mortar. Carefully removing the bricks, Michael saw a canvas bag, the neck of which was tied with a leather cord. Nancy. I found something strange, said the guy with difficulty extracting the package. And what can it be? Nancy whispered excitedly, cutting the neck with a kitchen knife. When the young people looked inside, they could not restrain the cry from surprise. The bag turned out to be filled to the brim with gold nuggets of various sizes. This is a gift from Grandpa. What should I do with such wealth now? 
Nancy whispered, her voice trembling with excitement. Michael, who felt sorry for the girl, agreed to help her with the valuation of gold. Although the guy was not rich, but next to him, Nancy felt at ease and comfortable. After selling some of the gold, Nancy decided to renovate the house. She bought all the necessary materials, and Michael volunteered to help her with the construction. The guy all this time experienced an inexplicable attraction to the girl, who was like two drops of water similar to his deceased wife. Starting with the house, the young people became close friends, and then, to their surprise, they began to feel sympathy to each other. Michael and Nancy were united by a dysfunctional past and a desire to start a new life. About a month after they met, Michael asked the girl to marry him. He did it quietly and calmly, without the ostentatious bragging characteristic of Floyd. Nancy agreed, and subsequently did not regret her choice at all. But this was not the only good news at the time. According to the court's decision, Kevin and Josh were turned to their legitimate mother. Due to the fact that Floyd, who is completely ruined, died of an overdose having gone aloud. Now in Nancy and Michael's house, joyful laughter sounds and the boys interrupting each other asked to give them another brother or sister.